Okay, I'm back. We had a moment of uh, glitch there. I was able to get the camera turned the right way. And now we can start the project. Uh, yay, somebody's coming back. I know it was a pain, sorry about that. Hi, Emily, back again. Sorry about that. Um, really, sometimes technical. The geniuses of modern world actually make things harder. So, let's go see if I can get myself connected also on my iPad so I can see what questions might come up. And there we go. Okay, I'm gonna open that up. And then, <laughs> I have no idea what that means, Rima, but I appreciate whatever it is. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to work on the project now that I've got the camera straightened out. Um, let me angle down. So you all saw, if you saw my last videos, you saw the mirror. Let me move this, and I hope to God I don't glare anybody when I flip this because there's all kinds of lights going on. Um, I finished the mirror. Let's do that. I've gilded it. I've put that green coating on, then I have varnished plus this, so now it's super durable. But I have these areas over here and on the other end that had the gesso all chipped up and everything, and I didn't know what to do, because I knew I, well, I knew what I was gonna do when I started this. Um, thank you, Rima. Um, I knew that I wasn't going to try to correct the damage that's here and there's big chunks out of the gesso and stuff here I figured I was going to find a way to hide it and I saw something gorgeous uh, in house and garden or something like that where they had taken beautiful artificial flowers and kind of wrapped them around the the frame and made it look like this was a garden mirror and or made their mirror look like that so that's what i'm going to do and i bought a lot more flowers than i'm going to need but i hate being short-handed so we're going to start with a few here um i could do this with hot glue but i don't like hot glue hot glue is not terribly permanent so i tend to use E600 and then once I've got them all firmly in place I'll probably go around the E600 with an even stiffer glue. So uh, the first thing I'm gonna do I got these look like pliers but they're actually wire cutters in here so I'm gonna cut these flowers and I gotta go the other way very close to the base like that so I have a flat surface. And I'm not throwing the leaves away. I'm not throwing the little bud away. I'm just setting it to the side. I have in my head sort of how I want it to look, but that doesn't mean that that's how it's going to go. So I'm gonna start with placing one or two flowers. Let's see how much I can open this one. That's what the pliers ends of this is for. I have like four tubes of this in my studio and they all get all crudded up. So I'm gonna put a generous blob here so that the plastic part will anchor because there's a little plastic and wire nub, but I also want it to get the fabric. And that sits like that. And then I'll build out with some smaller flowers. I have some dogwoods, I have some mountain laurel, I have some other damn thing, I have some wisteria. Um, yeah, I don't even know what all I have because I'm not really the gardener, but I know this is a, a peony. And I can only build a few of these out at a time um, because the glue has to firm up. So I'll take a couple of other blossoms. Don't ask me which yet. I haven't decided. I have these beautiful... Actually, I had planned to use the pink one, so maybe I'll clip that and change that. Um... I'd actually plan to use the white one that has these beautiful pink tips. Ugh. Ugh. Not the best thing to be doing when you're arthritically challenged. So I'll just take that. You can see it's got glue all over it. So I'm gonna take a little more glue 
and squish it on here. And I'm gonna leave this other flower drying with the glue drying upside down so it doesn't get ruined and stuck to something it's not supposed to. That's what I wanted. Okay, come on, stay upright. Now, if this doesn't stay upright, I'll take a little, you know, I've got cups and all kinds of things, and a little prop. There's not a lot of weight to them, so I don't have to worry too much about that. Um, and then I'm going to take another small, a small peony bud, snip that down, apply it there, big blob of glue. So what I'm gonna start with is a couple of buds. And I'm tucking them in together. And yeah, I got a couple more of these. So I'm gonna start with three peonies, I think, and then let that dry and we'll go on to other ideas um, while that glue sets up for a minute. Ah! <laughs> um, I did clean the mirror a little bit, but in, you know, I know it's gonna get dirty in the process of doing this. All right, so I've got these. Let's see, is that enough glue? No, I didn't get enough glue. And this is, this is constant, by the way. Things will fall off, things have to be glued back on, things have to be repositioned. And none of that phases me. It used to freak me out. I used to think, oh my God, I didn't get it right the very first time I touched it. Yeah, now I expect things to fall apart before I get them on the right way. So those will dry for a few minutes. Um, E6000, E600, whatever that is, E6000. Um, sets up pretty quickly, so I'll be able to come back and do some more in a minute. But um, I will show you kind of where I'm going with this. Uh, let me pull some more of these butts out. And my intention is to have all of this built up so it looks like a garden flowing and I'll tuck some dogwood blo blossoms in and out here. Really so I have a really lovely small flower arrangement covering the damage. And there's some damage parts down here so I'll do a little bit on the damage down here. I don't, I don't I'm not covering the whole thing. In flowers that would be absurd and why would have I spent all that time leafing it but now you see the green ties in because I have a little bit of this green coming with the blossoms and I'm really making a springtime mirror and um, this one I think I'll be selling I'm, I haven't decided I don't think I don't have a client calling for this this was one that I pulled out of my storage bin and decided what I was gonna do with it um, you do all these. I have lots of ideas running around. Hi, I can see myself in the mirror. Hey, hi. Um, I'm gonna flip the camera up. I always have a lot of ideas running around in my head, so I always have project pieces. Um, don't mind, don't worry. I still got a ton of other stuff going on, but these are the project pieces that I'm working on with you right now. So I save these for you to, to for you to see where I'm going, and then I do other work. Sorry, I'm picking up the pieces of flowers sitting on my feet. So give this a few minutes, it'll firm up, we'll be in good shape. Um, I can come back in and tuck more pieces in and I'll sort of comb along this way and some of the flowers will fall down. This is a nice long mirror. This is a beautiful piece of mirror too. It's um, older, it's heavy, it's got a little bit of the uh, oxidizing happen on the back. Uh, if I get glue like I know I can see I have right here, uh, on the mirror, it doesn't matter. I can clean it off really easy because it's a good mirror. Um, crappy mirrors are harder to clean stuff off of because you actually can damage that. Uh, and the next thing then I think, I think I got this on enough time. Um, let's see how these are setting up. They're actually setting up really well. I might be able to give our gold leaf size a few more minutes to set up since, the, since as I babble the E600 sits up sets up nicely and I'll put a few pieces in so let's angle down uh, I think I'm gonna take some of this pretty dogwood and um, I have no idea as I do this I, I kind of have things in my head 
and then I trim them down to see if they work. So I'm thinking maybe a little tucked there. And I will go back and check to make sure that I don't have funny stems sticking out in strange places because that would look awful. Awful. Um, okay, I'll cut this bigger piece off. I used to be able to do that like one-handed, no problem. And I may have a couple pieces sticking out tall in the back. So I may actually take the dogwood like that Let me start arranging some flowers here and see how I like it. I have so much of this now, I, I'm not even concerned that I'll run short. Um, this, is, this is not something I typically do. I don't normally glue flowers onto this, uh, onto stuff. It reminds me of, um, oops, clunk. Sorry, I don't think you saw that. It was off camera. I needed a better angle. Um, <laughs> it reminds me of an old, HGTV episode where uh, <laughs> one of the, you know, flipper, one of those house flopping episodes where the um, designer had the homeowners glue like hundreds of flowers onto a bathroom wall. And my first thought was that is the stupidest thing ever, especially in a bathroom, because what's going to happen? Um, when they need to take a shower and all of those things look awful and get wet and dirty and nasty. Oh, that's wisteria. Um, I truly, I, I have to hold things up and see how I like it. These flowers I got at uh, Pier 1. I don't buy too many of my flowers at um, Michael's. I don't find that they have the quality I like. Let's see, and I have some mountain laurel here. I probably bought way, way, way more flowers than I needed, but I didn't know how I was going to want this to, you know, I didn't know how they were going to lay. The, the, I have ideas in my head. Um, that doesn't mean they're going to be the best ideas on the face of the earth. Let's see, where was that pink one stem? Let's see. I've clipped everything, I've pulled things apart. Oh, that's the bud, I was, I was looking for the pink bud. I only wanted a little bit of pink in here. You know, if there was any pink showing, I just wanted it to be like a little hint that came from one flower and some of the, the peonies that, see, I'm kind of liking that. I could use some opinions here, Sam. Let me know what you say, because. I don't know if I'm getting too crazy with all the mountain laurel in here. I don't want it to look like a cheap Michael's flower arrangement. I want this to have some style. And I tend not to use too many fluffy flowers like this because they get in there and um, get a little heavy looking. Let's see. That's getting in there. I don't want to unglue it just because I'm testing out flowers too. All right, well, I've got some ideas. Um, I'm gonna reach back. Give me just one second. Let's see where we're at with the size. That's still a little, a little sticky. All my decisions have to be made on how things are drying because I do have a set up for gold leaf size. Um, let's see. You only see the back. Oh yeah, I know you're only seeing where, I'm only arranging here. Um, and you're seeing the back of the flowers. I see if I can turn the camera angle differently without, you know, one of my famous let's drop the camera moments. Uh, let's see, there we go. Uh, I'll move this a little bit onto the mirror maybe. This is fun. Um, okay, there you go. Let's see. It's not easy 
getting this on here because now I'm literally on top of the mirror. And I keep angling so maybe you get a, a better idea. Okay, let me get all this extra stuff out of the way because you can't see the vision in my head. So I'm thinking there's the dogwood, there's the dogwood, I've got the peonies. I wanted to put maybe another peony in here. Pull out that one single peony, I mean dogwood. I don't wanna go too crazy with this. I, honestly, this is all really easy to manage. That peony stem is gonna to be too long. I can already tell, because I am gonna stick that peony in there. Now this is, this kind of, I think I used up most of my E6000 here. Um, this is, this is a project where it's really, really easy to go overboard with the flowers and it starts looking crafty instead of chic. So I have to be very careful and pay attention to what I'm doing. I really, I really don't want this to end up as a craft project. Um, I actually have a client in mind for this, but that doesn't necessarily mean that's where it will end up. I may just keep it for myself if I like it enough. So I've got the peonies glued in. I'm going, and again, I'm not worrying if I get any glue or anything on um, the uh, mirror. Thanks, Reba. Less is more. You're right. Less is definitely more. Remove one of the small peonies. Which one? One of the pink ones or the white ones? Because I'm thinking I like this and then I like this in there. And I, the dogwood blossoms then hide that pink peony a little bit, so it's just sort of peeking out, which I kind of really like. I think the pink one's too much. What would you put in there? Would you take the pink out and put a little mountain laurel? See, I don't like the mountain laurel. I think the mountain laurel looks... First of all, it's too white, and all these flowers have a little greenish cast to them, which is why I picked them. I just stay with the dogwood. Okay, well, let's do that. Let's um, get the dogwood in. I bought so many flowers because I didn't know what I was gonna want or what I was going to need. Um, I think I need to get rid of that tube. I can't even reach into where I wanna put it. I love dogwood. Dogwood was one of my mother's favorite flowers, and we always had dogwood trees growing up. And they really remind me of spring. Even, I, I love peonies. All my friends who, I have a very dear friend whose mom used to grow a ton of peonies. And then she couldn't bring them into the house because they always attracted ants. Come on, get in there. Of course, no, no. I added in perfectly before, so now it's not going to go in perfectly now. And then I'll get this one in. Now mind you, like I said, this glue is basically just to tack it in so I can go back and re-secure it later. put this last dogwood in to kind of fill in a gap that I don't find it's pretty. And there we go. Now I probably should tack this down here just to keep it from moving too much. Because when I set this up straight, I don't want the branches falling down. And then I will put a little tack of it here. And you can see E600 makes like spaghetti all over the place. It's all stringy and stuff. Now that's, again, like I said, temporary tacking it down. Okay, don't add more flowers. I'm not going to. Um, this is actually really what I had in mind. 
the other end, turn it around, hi, the other end here has some damaged spots that I may put a dogwood blossom or two here because I want, I think I'm going to continue on with the dogwood trend. Of course, I managed to find like the only dogwood in Pier 1, so that would be the one I liked and that I have the fewest of. So I'm gonna take, um, you can't see what I'm doing, I'm gonna take a, a leaf and I'm gonna take a blossom. There we go. And I'm gonna just kind of attach it right there where that nasty spot is. And it'll look a little like the blossom is falling down off of the, uh, let's see if I can slide that in there. This may or may not work. I take things apart and I reconstruct them all the time. And it's a little too peaky. We'll fix that. I will make it work. Yeah, there we go. May have to do something different here. Or maybe I'll have to tack the leaves down, weigh them, and then stick the flower in. That may be where it has to go because this doesn't want to stay. And then I'll put something on here as a weight. Look. There we go, that'll work. So I think that'll, that'll work. Stick that in there. Um, this leaf, I think is the one you were talking about, Rima, but it's too much leaf up here and it's the wrong green. It's a really bright green. Oh, oh of course, I just kicked all the other flowers loose. That's how my, stick, my Mondays are. It's, heck, it's not even Monday, it's Wednesday, but I think it's Monday. That'll tell you. That'll tell you where I'm at. Okay. So I'm working on getting things adhered. I might need a few more weights on some things. Let me see what I got. I have a hammer. Just a minute, I have a hammer. So I can weigh something down with a hammer. Actually, I can weigh two spots down with a hammer. Okay, so that's, that's really where I was going with this. I thought it was just a pretty, springy way to handle a damaged mirror, embrace the flaws, and um, just girly it up a little bit. It's um, kind of commercial looking. You could put it in a restaurant. Um, it's a great solution for old mirrors. And uh, you could do, you know, holiday time. You could do, I, I'm not a big one for doing pieces of furniture that are themed for a uh, holiday or a season unless um, I'm asked for it. Um, but the spring mirror just kind of spoke extra girly, so it could go into uh, a pretty dressing room, it could go into a girl's room, it could go into a commercial space, it could go into a store for viewing jewelry, stuff like that. I, I like that idea. Um, that's uh, This is as close to seasonal furniture as you're gonna see me ever do. Um, I. For, I know a lot of people like to do holiday themed. The life of a piece of furniture like that is pretty short. It has a very specific use. So I'll do some holiday themed decorations, but I won't do, um, I'm rarely gonna do like a, a black and orange piece of furniture uh, unless it's specific for a, a, a home or a room because if it looks too Halloween-y, Halloween one, Halloween's one day, the season, you know, is a month. And, you know, Halloween is now, in case somebody, some of you didn't know, Halloween is now um, the second largest selling holiday in the United States, um, follow, uh, following Christmas. There's more merchandise sold for Halloween than there is for any other holiday other than uh, Christmas. So it's really easy to get caught up in the idea of selling themed stuff for different holidays. 
I, and I will I do plenty of it I promise you I do all kinds of creative stuff but I don't generally do Halloween themed furniture or Christmas themed furniture or Fourth of July themed furniture although Americana uh, the red white and blue uh, flag patriotic furniture is very popular um, in country style um, furniture it's less often seen in more contemporary furniture and thank you Rima for telling me my my mirror is pretty as soon as uh, the glue is done I'll push these things out of the way and I'll give a final shot to what the mirror looks like and then a little bit I'll get some stiffer glue into there like I said the E600 is my tacking what I call tacking glue it's great for gluing on a lot of stuff for anything with texture like this um, I need a little firmer glue to back up what I'm doing if it sorry for flipping with the glasses my glasses got sat on the other night and the wing piece is rubbing behind my ear and it's killing me all right I think eh, looking at my looking at my watch to see how long ago I put gold leaf size on because um, we're we're going to go over to the chest and I'm going to work on putting on that beautiful ocean blue um, color Japanese colored silver on the top of the chest and uh, I will show you how I've prepared it and I'll talk about that and then we're gonna work on that little kids chair for a little while so this might be plenty of time online and I know Rima is recovering from scraping a floor so <laughs> She's looking for entertainment today and okay, I'm gonna try not to flip the camera on the floor uh, I won't flip it on the floor, but it won't let go of the, out of the holder. Holy guacamole <laughs> This will be the part that gets edited out when I stick it on YouTube All right, so um, Okay yeah, the last uh, the last time I did the live, I did the gold leafing on here. And as you can see, it's not perfect. Uh, I'm okay with that. I kind of love this distressed look. It makes me really happy. Now we're going to work on the top. You can see it's kind of nice and shiny. I have the edges taped off really nicely. Um, when I tape off my edges, and this is the tripod I tend to really throw things out of, so be patient with me. And I'm going to start working from over here so you can see me leafing. Um, I'm going to start in the center and kind of work my way out in this way. Uh, I'm going to apply it in a way I got taught years ago. Now, I have to bump in and out of the screen. Uh, and I'm actually going to go grab my iPad so I can set it over here next to me and try to read questions as they come up. So give me just a second. Enjoy yourself looking at my shiny black top over there Let's see i've got my ipad it's kind of weird i'm see on the screen hi martin i see you're with me so i'm putting my ipad over on the shelf behind me let me grab my gold my silver leaf which is down here um this is a book of a sheet of a hundred of that beautiful ocean blue leaf which is what we're going to put on here and wherever it breaks if it's imperfect um, I'm going to backfill it with uh, mica powder sorry so this is this is not a quick process and the way I was taught years ago is I can take a piece in between this is this is slow. This is not a fast project. This is not a project to do on a day when you're, you've got the jitters, had too much caffeine. And you slide. I hope this works on this and that I'm not lying. Then I have to figure out a different way to do it. This should work. So you slide the piece back a little bit. It's sandwiched between two pieces of paper sandwich between two pieces of paper you slide the top piece back a little bit and then you use the bottom piece and the top piece to hold it now I could measure this off and make it perfect I'm not doing that I can't be bothered to be that perfect I'm gonna take it down I'm gonna set it down 
and then I pull it back. And I use a little mop brush. I have bigger ones, but I have one that's sitting right next to me. I use a little mop brush to tamp it down. Look how pretty that color is. I love that color. And then I go back into my stack. And I know you, you can't see it because the angle, but my stack is sitting behind me. Let me see if I can angle this camera a little different without flipping the phone off of it, because I do it every time. Hang on, I'm back behind the camera. There we go, that might help. So I'm not constantly out of view for you. Although some people might want that. Some people might be tired of seeing my face. So, I've got it again. And I actually have a couple of pieces. And that gorgeous blue, it's called Ocean Blue Japanese Colored Silver. So I'm using this and I'm dropping it down. And again, it's a little angled. I'm okay with that because um, the nature of what we do is hand created and flawed is okay with me. And I have to now get this up, which I'm gonna use this to push it down but I don't want to lose all these other sheets that are underneath here. It's, I do this all the time with composition leaf, which is a little thicker, and sometimes it's a little easier. Let me get my knife. I'll take my combo knife here. And lift it up. Oh, I see why it wasn't lifting, because it felt a little uneven. And that's okay. I'm going to tap it down with my fingers. And then I'm gonna slide it back again. This works, this is really helpful with the Japanese silver because it's brittle. It doesn't wanna be picked up with the tip. And it can be a bit of a challenge to work with because it's so fragile. But I like how this looks on here. So I'm gonna slide this under, pick that up. Again, it's my application method is flawed and I like it. I like that irregularity on it. And while well, I've used the oil size on this because of the material I'm using, I will seal this with MSA varnish and then I will top coat it with varnish plus because varnish plus is my go-to furniture sealant. I like it the best. It wears the hardest. It'll shine the glossiest. It just doesn't discolor and it will create the finish on here that I love. And since we don't know what the final use of this piece is going to be, it could be anything from in a bedroom to uh, a coffee table. I want something that's going to have a little bit of alcohol resistance to it. Um, which is a, exactly what you get with Varnish Plus. So top coating is very important because I don't want to lose this beautiful color on anything. So I'm going to keep going all over the surface here. Um, definitely ask me any questions you have because I do, now that I have the iPad next to me, I can see this. And you can see it's not a straight line. I'm okay with that because um, it's all going to be kind of brittle and fractured and stuff anyway because of the nature of what this is. I got taught this method at my very, very, very first IDOL convention. For those who don't know what that is, it's International Decorative Artisans League uh, in 19... Oh geez, 1999, 20 years, almost 20 years ago in Valley Forge, Pennsylvania. And um, it was before there was a lot of control over what materials we used in the classrooms and stuff like this. And I was in a basement uh, classroom and she was using all kinds of noxious chemicals and oil-based solvents and all that kind of fun stuff uh, 
in a room with no ventilation. We actually had a pregnant lady in the class who had to drop the class and get her money back because uh, she couldn't breathe and it was a hazard. So yeah, don't do this while you're pregnant. With oil-based, you can always use great water-based uh, sizes. My favorite is, of course, Faux Effects Designer Foil Size. But I'm not using that with this silver because the silver has, uh, I have to be careful about doing anything that would cause oxidation problems. I really don't, even though this silver has been treated, I don't know. See, I had a bad lay down there because I had some slide. Oh well, stuff happens. I'll fix it. That'll be what I do after I get all this silver on. Um, I've had a great time at Idol. Actually, it's where I met Martin Allen Hirsch, who, if he's not watching now, was watching a minute ago. It's where I met Rima. It's where I met a lot of great people. It's nice to have a community of artists. Um, it's different than it used to be. It used to be much bigger, but there's still some great people involved. I still have a lot of fun, and I'm teaching there this year. I'm teaching a uh, furniture class, and who knows? If I have my class set up, but I might be using a little bit of this kind of material in class. Hey, Julie, nice to see you there. So I do have, I think I did one finish where I was using a little bit of this product. Um, my finish, I think, was green, I think. I don't remember for sure because I don't have every finish I've ever done in the forefront of my memory, even though I'd like to think I could remember everything. Course, since I couldn't even remember today is Monday I don't know why I'm surprised I don't remember so just so everybody knows um, Japanese silver leaf is not inexpensive um, this book of a hundred sheets was two hundred and twenty dollars so that makes these pieces of silver two dollars and ten cents a piece so you know take that cost into your factoring when um, you're doing your bid and you're using this because that's that's not a little bit of money and you know I've got uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 pieces on here already so you know I'm pushing my way to $30 worth of silver, and I haven't even come close to covering this yet. And I used real gold on the bottom. So, you know, fi doing fine furniture is expensive. Somebody says, why does a piece cost so much money? Well, you know, when you're talking $100 in materials alone, things get expensive. So... Let me see how I want to do this, because I have this kind of bent piece. Oh good, it, uh, it's straightened out. So I'm getting all these pieces on. I don't know where I put my burnishing brush. Oh, there it is. So I'll put, just so you all see how this is laying down. I have wrinkles, I have irregularities, I like that, that makes me happy. This is not my regular Gilder's tamp, but I forgot to pull it out when I was setting up for the video, so I'm going to use the one I had in my hand. And maybe this time I'll stick it in my pocket since I got myself a new apron. Alright, let's ooh, get back to the silver. I still have plenty of silver left. It doesn't look like much, but boy, you know, that's a uh, 15 sheets out of 100. I've still got plenty of silver. I'm just trying to take a little bit at a time. I probably got about 10 sheets right there. So I'm taking it again, 
taking it, sliding the paper back, and then laying it down, pulling the under piece out, dropping that sheet of paper, and then using my gilder's knife to help me pick that up because this is thinner paper and finer silver than when I was when I usually do this kind of technique with compo gold. Compo meaning composition. Uh, composition gold is not real gold. It's imitation gold leaf, usually made with brass and other metals to get uh, that gold look. But it's not gold. It, it in itself is not gold. Huh, let's get that in there. Come on, tap down. Tap, 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 tap. And you know, when I brush this off, there will be quite a bit that goes sailing onto the floor. My vacuum cleaner's like fairyland. It's all filled with metal. So I'm gonna slide the paper back. Okay. And let's see, I'm not going to place a whole leaf over here because I've got this hinge and I have not sized the hinge. Um, I honestly haven't decided how I'm handling the hinge. So I'm just gonna place this here slide it down, throw that piece away, go with my knife, let me lift it up, and I know I have breaks right here and that's fine because I'm also planning, you know, to fill in whatever gaps don't get filled in with the blue when I burnish to fill in with uh, a nice beautiful shade of gold mica and copper mica to play up on this gorgeous blue. Okay. Oh, I had a piece that's stuck. Well, that's stuck there. I'll figure that one out as I go along. Now I gotta spin this so I can get to this side. Wow, I actually spaced it right so I can spin it and not hit the camera. I'm impressed with me. And I gotta go get the silver. So I left it all on the other side. Okay. Put the silver down where I can reach it. And again, I'm gonna slide it back. I do this a lot this way on walls, that slide back thing. Of course, when I'm doing walls, I have the, <laughs> the lines marked on the wall. Um, and once you get going with the lines, it's, it, they stay pretty straight. This one I didn't mark the lines because um, I didn't want to take the chance that any of that line would show. And uh, mar the finish I'm creating. moisture on my finger to slide that paper back because my hands are super dry all the time. Okay, so you can see it covers nicely. We've got a beautiful layout on there, and that was nice of me. I just stuck my finger in there when I didn't mean to. So I'll put a piece of tissue over there. Take a few more sheets. that right there, that break is where I actually stuck my thumb when I didn't mean to. So I'm gonna slide again. Now 
know, if I wanted this perfect and even and regular, um, I would be, have it marked. I'd be going a lot slower. The funny thing is, I kind of find irregular really beautiful. Okay. Let's see. <laughs> We're all very quiet watching you do this. I, I, thanks, Julie. I have a, I have a hard time um, talking nonstop, especially when I'm gilding. Um, but having dead air on a video is a little like having dead air on TV. It's not that interesting. So instead, you get to listen to me babble on. Uh, I'm gonna funny lay there, so I know I'm gonna pick that up, and it's gonna have fractures. It's still so pretty. Um, my SOG high-end gilding friends were like, what the hell is she doing with all that gorgeous silver leaf? What a mess she's making. Nope, this is what I want. This is very intentional. And again, this kind of leaf is so brittle. It's really beautiful, but it is super, super brittle. Um, some metals are softer, some metals are more brittle, um, but Japanese colored silver is probably the most brittle you could work with. It doesn't bend, it breaks. Sort of like my back right now. <laughs> That's not going to light up. We're getting there. Like I said, it's, it's not a quick process. This is, this is actually, if I was, you know, I, I think there's some guilders who are really gifted with Japanese leaf, leaf and they could probably pick it up and flop it down, pick it up and flop it down. Um, that's, that's not me. I find this truly to be the most productive way. Um, Of course, I haven't spent the last 20 years of my life, including an apprenticeship, learning to do this stuff. Um, I've attended Society of Gilders Convention several times. Um, there's some wonderfully gifted people there. Oh my goodness. And I watched a lot of videos and I've read a lot of books, but sometimes I just get my hands on stuff and see how I want to play with it. And, you know, sometimes I'm successful, sometimes I'm not. Okay. getting to most having most of it done and I will go back and fill in the gaps but I want to get the whole thing done um, when I first started gilding I was kind of obsessed with how I did things so if I had one little gap here I had to stop doing anything else and fix the gap I've learned it's better to do the whole thing and get the whole thing done uh, than worry about one gap because then I can figure out where I might have some overage someplace that I can burnish it off and use it somewhere else and fill in holes. See, like I had that piece actually accidentally pinched into my finger. So look, I'll take it over here to this questionable spot. There you go. Voila. All done.
getting to the end, so my talking is stopping now because I'm paying attention to what I'm doing. There's that. And then we have that last corner, and then I have this front edge. Sorry about that, I got a phone call in. I turned off my cellular data, and somehow a phone call even came through. I don't know why. And it's probably um, one of those robo dials because I seem to be getting them nonstop. So I've got most of this done. I'll pull. I'm gonna take my little brush and clean around the edge. That's not my brush, that's my knife. So I'm gonna take this around the edge, clean this up here. And then I have all these little edge bits along here technical term, edge bits. You can see I got, I've got some bigger pieces that I could probably use to fit there, but I have a feeling it might not pull so well. Let's see how I do. Yeah, see this is, it doesn't tear cleanly. It tears with these really rough, brittle edges. So it doesn't always do what I need it to do. And for once, my hand has a little moisture on it. So instead, I'll just Stick that right there. Tap that down. And let's get that little other piece that I dropped. Stick that in there. Tap that in. Take that, tap that in there. Tap that in there. some of the bigger spots fixed. I'm going to turn it around again and I'm going to get that front edge. Oops, clunk, sorry, hit the camera. I had it right the first time. Oh, Julie, I'm so glad. Thank you. I'm glad you'd like to try this. I would, I'm going to tell you right now, if you're going to try this for the first time, um, use composition leaf and practice on a sample board or something like that. Make it easier on yourself. Don't do it with the most expensive leaf you can buy. Uh, you won't be happy. This technique is really, really helpful, though. It's saved me a lot of agony. See, I've got a little tear here. I actually stuck my finger in it accidentally. But I can get this edge cleaned up. And then... I'm going to take this. Like I said, most people cannot stick their fingers on Japanese leaf the way I do. Um, the reason anything's sticking to me is I actually have a little bit of size on my fingertips uh, because I was sizing this with bare hands because I'm not always so bright. Usually I put size on, I have gloves on. Not today. I decided, oh, I won't get anything on anything. I'll just do my with my bare hands. Wrong. I got it all over my hands. All right, I'm gonna clean up that edge. So I'm gonna finish this part. Let's do it a little bit like this. Sometimes things work perfectly, sometimes they don't. I'm always happy when they work just the way I want them to. So, that's the same piece of leaf, and I'm rubbing it down. And instead of sliding the paper, I'm letting it tear. Good, Julie. I'm, I, I'm, I'm not ignoring you, Julie. I can't read the questions from the camera here, and my iPad is back over there, so I have to turn around and read. And of course, that doesn't help when I've got gold leaf in, or silver leaf in my hands. I can't see too well. So, now I still got this little piece left over here, but that's okay. I'll go and, yeah, one's stuck in here. Look, I'm just going to take it and 
tap it right in there. So I'm going to take another piece of silver. Um, I have a habit of always saying gold leaf. It's left over from using a lot of gold leaf, and then I forget I'm using silver. So if you know I'm using silver like I'm using right now, and I accidentally say gold, ignore me. Other people are good at that. I'm sure you guys will figure out how to ignore me too. Martin, when he's watching me, is really good at ignoring me or just teasing me, which I deserve. See if I can get that to flop in there and do what I need it to do, eh, more or less. So I just have a little left over here. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, slide that back. Um, I'm overlapping my leaf a little bit. That way I connect edge to edge. And it doesn't matter if I have a, a little funny bit left over somewhere. Okay. Ah, oh, that's beautiful. That's just what I wanted. Okay. I'll put that little bit in there to help fill that out. And here we go. I'm going to put the rest of my silver aside and I'm going to do a little count so you have an idea of how much a piece this size, how much leaf it takes. So I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43 sheets at $2.20 a sheet. So just understand what that's going to cost. Um, I don't know why it's, my, my, my Facebook feed seems to be frozen. Hopefully it's not frozen for you. It may be just frozen for me. So there's that. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to burnish this down a little bit and I'm going to get all the edges down. And I can also do this with a piece of cloth, which is what I'm going to do. Hang on just a sec. cloth here. So I'm going to take this and gently rub. And look how nicely that takes on there. Oh, that's so pretty. So pretty. So the other thing that we're going to do, because there's still going to be spots that I missed, is we're going to take a little gold mica powder and a little copper mica powder. And I'm hoping that uh, while my feed still seems to be frozen, there we go, we see something happening. Hey Kim! Oh, thank you. I'm looking at something else. My feed, oh, it seems to, my messages aren't frozen. It's just I'm getting frozen video feed on my iPad. So I'm trying to keep up with what's going on. So I have these little broken spots. So I've got copper mica powder 
and I have gold mica powder, and I have a respirator. You do not want to do this without a respirator. I'm taking my glasses off. I'm putting my respirator on, so I'll be muffled when I talk. See, respirator. I'm gonna put my glasses back on, and then, so I can see what I'm doing, get that brush out of the way. I'm gonna take a little bit of gold, and I'm just gonna kinda go over it in some of the spots that the uh, um, silver didn't grab or that I missed. It doesn't look, it looks messy as hell right now when I do this, but it won't by the time I'm done because all I'm doing is taking this and swirling it around. And this is, this is just a cheap makeup brush. And I'm taking some copper. And Rima has seen me use this combination before. It's actually what I did on my own personal nightstand because, you know, I do stuff for everybody else and then I don't do anything for me. And I finally got around to doing my own nightstand the other, yeah, a couple months back. And what this will do is this will color any place where the leaf broke and just give it a little hint of other metals. And it's really pretty. What I'm doing here, scrubbing the colors wherever there's a break. Because you see, I don't think you can see it right now, but there's spots on here where there's these tiny micro breaks. Um, leaf looks solid when you look at it flat on, but if you hold it up to the light, it's actually really got some transparencies and some holes in it because it's metal hammered super thin. So there's always gonna be some breaks in uh, leaf when you lay it down unless you double leaf it, which personally, sometimes I don't, I do it. I do it when I'm going in high detail. But I don't do it all the time because why? It's a lot of work and it's a lot of gold or it's a lot of silver. And the cool thing is I had this spot right in here. There's a crack, I'm not sure you can see, but there's a crack that the paint didn't go down into easily, but I put a little extra size there and uh, it looked really, really cool. Uh, thank you, Rima, I appreciate that. Okay, putting my lids back on my mica because I'm the kind of person who always knocks stuff over all the freaking time. And I'm sitting down for just a second because I want to cover up my leaf and put it away before I dust the uh, mica powder and get it all over the leaf. See, it comes in a package like this and it's all wrapped up. So, Mind you, 100 sheets, $220, and I've used close to half of this, that on this top. So, that should give you an idea why some pieces of furniture cost so much. Look how beautiful that is, and it just took that little bit of gold, that little bit of copper, and it's gorgeous. It almost looks like a smear right there, but it really is where the, the copper and the, I mean, where the silver broke. Oh, I love this. Now, what I would normally do is I will take a Swiffer, which I have over here, hang on. good old-fashioned Swiffer, because these are electrostatically charged, these make great things to wipe off a surface like this, and it doesn't leave any residue behind. And oh my God, look how beautiful that is. Oh, I love that.
Now mind you, I'm not done. I will do the surrounds on this with the, the blue, but I, only tr I try only to do one surface at a time because then if I have any problems, it's easier to correct. Oh yeah. Oh, I am so pleased with that. That is just so pretty. So I'm not taking off my respirator because we're gonna move on to one more project today. I am going to come and get the camera and see if I can manage not to throw it on the ground. Sorry for the hand. Oh my goodness, that's the first time I've ever done that without throwing the camera on the ground. That, that one tripod is my, my nemesis. So I'm coming over here. Or I was coming over there. I left my mica powder for the next project sitting over on my desk. And I'm sitting down a little lower because I have my last project. Look at the chair. The chair came out so pretty so far, but I'm not done. So, if you give me a minute. Hi. I'm gonna put this camera back in to a tripod. And I'm gonna aim it at the chair. I might even pull the legs up a little. These are the days where I wish I had a, a camera assistant with me. <laughs> so I'm sure you all saw the, the crazy video of the speed gilding on this, and this came out super nice with the Shabin, but I'm not loving it with just plain brown. So I did the bands around it with silver, ja uh, Japanese colored silver in, um, they called it red, but it's sort of a cranberry color. And then I took a little gold mica powder and brushed it in there so that all that green has a metallic shimmer too. But I don't, I still don't love the plain brown wood. Some people will, I don't. So I'm, I'm, I'm a little, going a little all out with this. I am taking Aztec gold mica powder. And again, I have my respirator on. And look at this. Oh. I can't see it yet, just yet. There we go. Let me angle that up. It is putting a rich gold wash color on the dark brown. Oh, it's so pretty. The brown doesn't disappear completely, but it makes, it shines through. Now I spent a lot of time trying to figure out what color. I could have gone with a copper. I even have reds. But I thought what would really play up this Shabin or Tamise and the Japanese silver would be gold. And this process, this messy, mica cloud that I'm creating is called flash gilding. Uh, gives the appearance of metallic with, um, with mica powder. So you see how the gold is taking this, this is the brown. Uh, again, I've used a, an oil-based size. I started with the oil-based size because I knew I was going to be using the Japanese silver. And since that is the one metal that I have questions about whether or not it's safe with water-based size. I used an oil-based size. Ducks is my go-to for that. Now, the cool thing is, too, if I find that I've missed a spot, like I think I missed a spot with the size here, uh, I'll just go back, put a little more size on, and then I did the front legs too. I didn't put size on the whole thing because then I can't roll it around and do what I need to do with it.
and like I said, Aztec gold mica powder. So you can see how that's turning those legs gold. Sorry, I gotta keep an eye on the camera. I've moved it around so many times today that uh, I forget to check and make sure I've got it angled right. I didn't put any size back on the backs of the legs. Um, I put it on the fronts and the outside sides. I may have, yeah, I put some on the inside of that leg too. This is super messy. Again, wear a mask, uh, a particle mask at least. Sometimes you can wear a respirator. I would wear a respirator if you didn't have to actually hear my voice while I'm talking. And I'm just working this in to the surface. And let's see if you can see me. And it doesn't matter if I get any of that on any of the other surface because there's no adhesive left. The adhesive I used to put this on has been dry for a couple of days, so it's not gonna pick up any. And if it did, it would only pick up in any of the spots that I might have accidentally missed. So I'm gonna do over here. Let's see. Yeah, I wanna make sure you can see. So I'm working on here. This is pretty cool. I like to do a lot of shiny, sparkly stuff. Um, sometimes my clients ask for it. Sometimes I do it on my my own and then I sell them. Um, sometimes my clients say, I know you like beautiful metal stuff. Here's the colors that I work with. Make me something. Okay. Anytime somebody says, have at it, I have some really great clients who just say, you know my aesthetic, don't just do what you want to do. Those are the fun clients. Not all clients uh, are that way. So I've had clients who are extremely controlling over every little thing that I've had to do. And all my, my job with them is to make them happy. And if they're happy by the time I'm done, then I did it right. So I'm just sort of rouging this in, working it into the grain of the wood, which I did not try to hide. Let's see if I can get this so. And angle down. So I've got about half, three quarters of the leg done. Uh, I get my mica powders from all kinds of places. Uh, Faux Effects International has great mica powders, especially highlight colors. They have like highlight blue, highlight orange, highlight violet highlight green, and then they have uh, a nice gold and a pearl and a very light silver. It's very light and very bright, almost a highlight color. And then I get a lot of color, uh, mica powders from, oh gosh, Sep Leaf, and I've bought some and imported them from Japan, and any place I find something interesting, I tend to, I'm a little like a magpie. I tend to buy things with, they give, seeing them gives me an idea, so I'll buy them and um, then I'll figure out what I'm going to do with them. Uh, yeah, it's not, this, <laughs> I don't know if that's a trait that makes my husband or my bookkeeper happy, but. In the end, it all works out because I still get stuff done. I am creating a heck of a cloud of this stuff. So when I'm done today, I'll walk out of my studio. I'll need a shower because I don't think you can see it. Well, you can a little bit. I'm, I'm sparkly already. My hair is going to be sparkly. And I will take these clothes off and throw them in a washing machine um, because I don't want to re-wear clothes covered in mica because I don't want to breathe it. That's not a smart idea. And then tomorrow the first thing I'll do is come down here and vacuum so that I can get all the mica powder off of the, the floor in a way that's not creating clouds everywhere. Let's see. Let's see where. 
think I'm not sticky on this one. I didn't get the inside of that one, but sorry, my arm's in the way. And then I have the last back here to do. And this will give you a basic idea of what the look was. And then the whole thing, I'll resize and the whole thing will um, have this gold all over it. Sort of like a little kid's throne, which I like. Little kid stuff doesn't have to be all perfect and cute. Sometimes it can just be out there and blingy. So, I don't think I, so there's the chair. Let's see if I can put it back. So it's pretty metallic, but you can still see the wood. Now I'll finish sizing in here. I'll finish sizing under the legs and I'll get all of it done. Let me turn it up and turn you towards me. Uh, hello, everybody. Hi, Gina. Hi, Debbie. So I'd say we've been, we've been busy for quite a while here today. I'm not taking off my particle mask because I have now just completely impregnated my air with uh, mica powders, although I will clean it up. Sorry for the, the duck down. Oh, you're, you're a little late, but you know what? I'll save it and I'll post it. And of course, you can always message me. Oops. This is what happens. I put my glasses on over a particle mask and it goes flying. Um, oh, sorry about that. I got to have the glasses on to read what anybody asked me. Um, just so you know, I don't think you can see that. Yeah, you can see my toes. That's not what I was aiming for. Down here, this orange, this is all the mica powder that cloud up just near the feet. So this makes a heck of a mess. Um, I will completely vacuum down the place before I do anything else tomorrow because right now you can't see it, but it's like, you know, dust motes in the sun. Well, in my studio right now, it's mica motes in the, uh, fluorescent light <laughs> and I can't I honestly can't do anything else because now I've I saved the, the the mica stuff for the end of the day specifically because I knew it was going to make a huge mess and I'll come in tomorrow I'll vacuum I'll dust I'll wipe everything down because I can't do anything else put size on anything put a top coat on anything unless I intend to have mica particles on all of it um and I'm not even taking this off until I leave. I have uh, my room enclosed here. And I'll show you my one of my favorite products in the world. Um, actually, behind me, you can see there's plastic up there. It's actually not a wall behind there, but that's my divider for common space. But actually having that up is a great thing because it's called tape and drape. And it has an electrostatic charge similar to that of Swiffer. And it sucks particles to it. It actually was designed for... Um, People just keep trying to call me while I'm on here. And I turned off my cellular, cellular data. I don't know why the heck it's doing that. But anyway, um, the electrostatic charge in that is really helpful because it'll help suck the mica particles to it and it won't release it. And eventually I'll end up coming in, taking it all down, redraping everything so that I have a, a fresh surface. But this is the only thing that has kept um, my, me sane with all the construction down here because we've had so much dust and it's really helpful when I use a lot of mica. Okay, everybody. Uh, I think that's it today. Um, I'm still looking over at my own iPad and over there my video froze, but obviously you guys are all seeing it because you're uh, commenting. Oh yes, nice hole in my ceiling. I know uh, that was for vent construction and I still don't know what's happening with that. Anyway, have a great Wednesday. I will probably be, my plan is to be back and doing more video on Friday. Uh, I may have to come up with a whole new project because I should pretty much will be done with all of this by Friday. So I'll have to think up a new project to be online with. Uh, if you have suggestions, feel free to message me with them or comment on them here. Uh, I have stuff, but I have no idea what my next project is going to be for the fun of it. I have to pull some work items together, but I try not to put too much client work on this. It's not fair to my clients. Anyway, enough of me rattling. Have a great Wednesday, 
It's beautiful out here. I hope it's beautiful where you are, and I will see you later in the week. Bye.